My name is George Neff. I spent many years at uh, what is now Rowan when it was Glassboro State College. And uh, I had an experience that uh, we're, we will share with you, or I will share with you. However, uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. I um, taught for five years after 1962 when I arrived in uh, the art department teaching general courses in art appreciation and uh, my specialization at that time was ceramics so I did some of that. For uh, a while I spent um, some time in uh, central administration uh, the college was structured very different, differently in those days, but I was, my, my title was uh, assistant provost, or provost as they now call it. And uh, most of my time was spent teaching. It was 1967, and Glassboro State College was just about to be on the front page of every newspaper in the, in the United States, possibly the world. I was there. At the time, there was not much security. It was sort of laid back because uh, most people didn't know yet because it, the news had not broken. And you could wander around campus pretty easily and freely, which I did and saw a lot of the preparations that were being made. The entire gymnasium was full of equipment, television, radio, everything, and uh, you could just walk in and watch people working. Trucks and trucks came on campus and uh, most of them would just empty out whatever they had on the campus somewhere uh, and the the president I, I understand the president of the college was having connections because uh, they were walking over the rugs and and, and the the waxed floor in the gym and everything was was being disturbed he didn't like disturbance but uh, that's the way it was we didn't see the president that, at all at that time. Somehow they got him in there and they came in and all at once we were told, well, they're in Hollybush now and having their conference. The story as I understand it is that Glassboro is about halfway between New York and Washington. Uh, Kosygin happened to be at the United Nations in, in New York and of course Johnson was in Lyndon Johnson uh, who was then president of the United States was in Washington and they decided they would pick a place instead of going to meet each other they would pick a place halfway in between and have their conference there Glassboro State College was an obvious choice because it had the facilities and it was relatively isolated from the rest of the world, as a matter of fact. Um, still is to some extent, but uh, it was okay. Uh, they thought that'll be the place. And so they had a, a president that was, able, was willing to give up his home for the time that they would be here. Now they thought it was only going to be one day and, and out. However, they did not finish their business. So they scheduled for another week. The, the original meeting was on a Friday. They came back on Sunday to finish up their business. In the meantime, the uh, faculty association and the uh, Chamber of Commerce for Glassboro decided that they would try to make a presentation, a gift to the, to the two heads of state. 
And they figured, you know, what, what do you give to the head of state? Somebody had seen a drawing of Hollybush where the two were meeting that it was hanging in my office. I had taken a watercolor class out to Hollybush because it's an interesting building. And while they were working on their drawings, I made a pencil drawing of my own. This became the Hollybush uh, picture that uh, the somebody had seen it in my office and they said, well, wouldn't that be uh, a fitting gift? It's where they met and perhaps uh, they would enjoy that as a, a memor memorabilia. So it was decided by the Chamber of Commerce and the Faculty Association to try to present that on Sunday. I was told of that on Saturday and asked if uh, I would be willing to donate uh, the picture. I said, fine. Well, we need two of them because there are two heads of state. Oh, well, that was a little different, but I said, I will try to get two finished by Sunday when they come back. So I spent most of the night working on two pen and ink renderings of the drawing of Hollybush so that each one would then really have an original pen and ink drawing. Well, Sunday came and it was time to present the, uh, the drawing, but nobody was breaching security at that time. They were not receiving anything. And so we were left without it without making our presentation. I did see Mr. Kosegan leaving because he stopped his vehicle in front of a crowd that I was in on Whitney Avenue, stopped and addressed the crowd. We were very excited at that time. He didn't say anything other than thank you for being so welcoming and, uh, and then he was on his way. And we thought that was the end of the story. Well, thanks to the industry of a few people, it was not the end of the story. The chairman of the Chamber of Commerce of Glassboro, working with the governor of New Jersey, Governor Hughes, we were able to make an appointment at the White House to present the drawing to Lyndon Johnson. We went down to Washington on the appointed day and in through all the traffic, my, my stomach was kind of hopping around and uh, I was wondering, you know, will we be late? What, what, what's going to happen here. Somehow it didn't seem possible that we were actually going to make this presentation. We were ushered in to, through a door in some place in the, in the back of the White House that, uh, I don't know, I suppose it's a secret area. Uh, and we, it seemed to me that we were in a tunnel someplace, but I'm sure it was hallways got the group together that was going to make the presentation, which only included uh, the governor of New Jersey, Governor Hughes, and the, the chairman of the, the Chamber of Commerce. And we walked through, it seemed like endless uh, corridors. And then all at once, the door opened and it was the Oval Office. And my first feeling was, no, this, this can't be happening. But there he was, 
the President of the United States sitting at a desk, a huge desk. And he got up and came forward and greeted us. We shook hands. Uh, we were introduced by someone who was there. Um, I think he introduced the governor, uh, just announced the governor, and the governor uh, introduced me as uh, the Hollybush artist. And we proceeded, after just a slight bit of chatter chatter, just talk between uh, the, uh, I didn't say much, I was frozen solid, but the others were talking and uh, I noticed the governor making a couple, a couple uh, statements uh, for the press, and uh, and the chairman of the chamber of commerce was saying how the small businesses were for you, President, Mr. President, and I was still holding my painting, waiting for for the nod. So I handed it to. Lyndon Johnson, he thanked me, shook my hand, and that was, that was, uh, that was it. We, we, we disappeared as fast as we appeared, I think, uh, through another, another door, I think, but again, through a lot of, a lot of uh, channels of uh, strange, seemed to me strange people lurking around, but I'm sure it was in my head. And uh, we went home. And that was uh, the first 15 minutes of fame that I had. The next chapter of the epic has to do with the second drawing. As I told you before, uh, I had spent all night putting together, creating let's, uh, two pen and ink duplicates of the original pencil drawing. One wound up on Lyndon Johnson's desk. The other one I still had. So we were interested in trying somehow, or I was interested in trying somehow to get that to the Soviet Union if we could mail it or, or whatever uh, so that he would actually get the drawing. As it turned out, we were not the only ones who were interested in following through on what had happened at the summit. McCall's Magazine, which no longer exists, but at the time was a very popular women's magazine, decided that uh, they would attempt to gather together a representative group from Glassboro, New Jersey, and send them to the Soviet Union in, as a return visit. So 10, P, 10 women, were selected from Glassboro. Uh, they were common people, I, he would say. They were ordinary people, nothing special about the group. Uh, they were small town America. So they were selected. Uh, I don't really know who did the selecting, but. Uh, there were they wound up there were ten of them and uh, they got got to go to the Soviet Union. My wife happened to be one of the women who was selected, and I was interested in trying to deliver the second drawing to Premier Kosygin. And so I asked if it would be possible for me to go along for the ride. That seemed to be okay. The trip itself 
was paid for by McCall's magazine, but it was involved a, an organization known as the Citizens Exchange Corps. And they're in the business, still in the business, of sending people to Russia and bringing Russian citizens over here. And as it's, the title indicates, Citizens Exchange Corps, they tried to get ordinary people and find counterparts, they called them, counterparts to uh, the Americans and, and link them together on, on a trip either to the Soviet Union or from the Soviet Union. It was a very exciting, exciting day and in, the, in the lives of these women, and I have to admit mine also. Uh, when we left, when the bus was leaving, to take us to New York to fly to the Soviet Union. Our arrival in the Soviet Union was very quiet. There were no crowds there greeting us. Nobody seemed to know that we were coming, except the officials who were guiding us. We were a surprise to the folks that we, we met. And as a matter of fact, there were a lot of uh, Russian student, uh, people who had never seen an American and were very curious about us. And they, they wanted to hear what we had to say. Of course, I'm sure that they had their fill of propaganda about the United States. But at the same time, they would like to see an American for themselves. I can remember arriving in a small town and looking down the street and there were clusters of people very much engaged in discussion and they were, that was where the Americans were. There would be one or maybe two Americans and the rest a small crowd all huddled around them asking questions about us, about our president. No one that we spoke to on the street knew anything about the summit meeting. It was not publicized in the Soviet Union. So it was an interesting story that we were telling them. Whether they believed it or not, who knows. So we made our way as best we could. Very few of us were able to speak the language. We made <laughs> pathetic attempts at it, I suppose. But the only thing I can remember is, and that was, attention, the subway door is opening important to know that, but not really for casual conversation with a Russian counterpart. Speaking of counterparts, Citizen Exchange Corps made every effort they could to uh, arrange for meetings with individuals in their own fields. In other words, I was in education, of course, but I was also in art. So they tried to arrange meetings with me of arti artists, at least. I guess it was only about one artist that I, I really was introduced to uh, in his studio and saw the kind of artwork that he was doing and found out, of course, that uh, Pretty much you had to follow the party line if you were an artist and, and you did social realism. Not too many abstractionists, although that was a big, the big uh, interest uh, as far as the people talking to us about art. You know, what are these strange 
uh, goings on in the United States of what are people painting over there. But it was very interesting to speak to him and actually I gave him one of the uh, reproductions of the, I didn't tell you that, uh, before I left. I photographed the Hollybush, one of the Hollybush ink drawings and then had some reproductions made from that which we took with us and so I was able to hand out a lot of uh, Hollybush pictures as tokens of remembrance and that was great because it's quite a custom in, in that country, understand that we're talking 50 years ago, uh, but uh, of exchanging small gifts of some sort. And invariably, if we would meet people, they would have something that, that they would give us. Well, it was, I felt, well, that's great that I brought all of these reproductions uh, of Hollybush that I could hand out and talk about even though it was news to them about the summit conference. The artist actually gave me a small sketch, uh, oil preparation for a larger uh, oil mural that he was working on, a little oil sketch, uh, which I brought, was able to bring home. Kind of exciting. We also, or I also was able to uh, meet with a puppeteer, uh, or actually a, a team of puppeteers, because that was my, in addition to uh, ceramics, I also at the time had just begun to get very serious about puppetry. And so I was able to meet with a, a puppet group. Again, very interesting to see the kinds of puppets that they used. And they were very interested. I did have some photographs of, of my own puppets, which I was able to show them. And of course, I gave them a Hollybush print. They didn't give me a puppet, though. So time went on, and uh, not much mention was made of my ambition to find Kosygin and give him the, Holly, the original Hollybush drawing. I was not, had not been forgotten by our tour director though. Uh, they were working undercover to try to make the arrangement possible. And we were pretty far away from uh, from Moscow when word came by telegram that uh, the meeting had been arranged. Well, we had to fly from where we were. The, the, the uh, distances in the Soviet Union are just so vast that every, there's nothing that's nearby. So we had to fly, and that was an interesting uh, flight because it was a very old plane, and it was it was didn't seem to be air conditioning, air conditioned, uh, and a very bumpy ride we had in that in that plane. We did make it though, uh, and made the appointment uh, with a member of the um, Council of Ministries. Now, Premier Kosygin was the chair of the Council of Ministries, and this is one of his ministers. Nikitin, I think his name was. And I made my presentation to him. And this is what I said. Six weeks ago, the leaders of the two most powerful nations in the world 
sat down in a picturesque old mansion in Glassboro, New Jersey, to discuss the most critical problems facing the world today. We do not know what, if any, conclusions were drawn. We do not know whether any progress was made toward the solution of these problems. We do know that these two men met face to face and man to man in an atmosphere of cordiality. It is the feeling of the citizens of Glassboro that we helped to create this atmosphere. And it is in that spirit in which we have come today. We have traveled many miles throughout the Soviet Union. We have found your people friendly and hospitable. We have found an unmistaking desire for world peace. True, we have also found times when we disagreed as to the means by which this goal may be accomplished. In these respects, we certainly must reflect the views of our respective leaders. However, just as they met in an oasis of peace in the midst of a troubled world, our visit to the Soviet Union has reinforced our belief that the answers must be found through mutual understanding and respect. To further this feeling, which we like to call the spirit of Glassboro, I created this drawing of Hollybush for the people of Glassboro and the whole United States to present to Mr. Kosygin and the people of the Soviet Union. A token of our earnest hope that the historic meeting of our leaders in this beautiful setting may prove to be a significant step toward the brotherhood of man which we all desire. Mr. Nikitin responded with words of thanks and assured us that our picture would reach its destination. The trip home was uneventful until we landed. At that point, little did we know, but there was a press conference that had been arranged and we came off the plane and were ushered onto a stage brilliantly lit and with I don't know how many television cameras were there and people snapping pictures. It was uh, like you see uh, after the State of the Union message where every all you hear is click, 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 click. And, and reporters firing questions at us because we were news not just because we were from the summit conference city but because we were Americans and we went to the Soviet Union and in the minds of a lot of people that was not the thing to do in those time, in those days. Uh, people thought, oh, commies, uh, red. In fact, as part of the uh, part of the aftermath, I guess you would say, uh, the Citizen Exchange Corps folks set up a meeting for me with uh, a late night talk show host. I really didn't know what the show was all about, had never seen it myself, it was out of New York. I don't even know if we got it in Philadelphia or Glassboro. But anyway, I was on the stage there facing this guy who started firing questions at me and then somebody in the audience got up and said, no, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. And, and they started a, a dialogue. And apparently that's what this show was all about. People were invited in uh, off the street and they had this interaction, political description, dis discussions um, with the host. Uh, I just sat there for the most part, 
and let the others. It, one of the CI, C, uh, Citizen Exchange Corps, uh, I guess actually the president, was there in the audience and he was talking. And, and that is what they wanted to have happen. Uh, they didn't want me clued in on what was going to happen because uh, they were afraid I, I would have refused to do the uh, to do the interview. But anyway, it uh, it was a little painful, uh, but it was important too because it was it was a publicity for the cause of peace, I think, because that's what we were all about. But I digress. Uh, after we got settled at home, I did a uh, stint on the uh, lecture circuit, I guess you would say. I put together uh, some a slideshow and gathered together uh, some of the uh, items that I had brought back from the Soviet Union, and also uh, slides that uh, I had taken, and made presentations really all over New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and uh, even as far as New York, uh, about, the, about the trip. And I felt pretty good about that because it was, it didn't just end when we got back, but I was able to spread the word uh, about something that I sincerely believed in. And I, I hope that maybe uh, changed a few minds, who knows. But it was certainly a worthwhile experience talking to people about what we did in the Soviet Union, what the Soviet people were like. It was interesting, but uh, we, I can recall calling, talking to a group of, uh, of elementary, well, actually junior high students um, who were in, in school, one of the schools that we visited, and I did a sketch of one of them and gave it to him. And he promptly asked me for my pencil and another piece of paper and he drew my picture and gave it to me, which I still have. That, I, I, I think, is kind of the essence of what we were doing. That was the whole idea of the exchange. 